Today on Scroll Broadcast, Cecily Walker shares the recap on this week's devotional. Then we'll see what Victoria Scout has to say about the Forum Hour Talk with Sister Eubanks, speaking about being a humanitarian. After that, we'll hear from Colin Prisbury about the school's IBC businesses. Hello, and welcome to Scroll Broadcast, a BYU-Idaho news show. We are so excited to be your hosts. I'm Lauren Parker. And I'm Andy Ordonez. Hey, Andy, what do you think about the IBC program? I think it's a pretty cool opportunity for students to learn about entrepreneurship. That's good, because we've got some interviews with Colin and the IBC students. Let's take a look at Colin Prisby with another segment on the student-run businesses. Hey guys, thanks for that. We're back with another episode of What Do You Sell? The IBC Companies. So I'm here with... Katie Ray Walker. Katie Ray Walker. And what's your company? Uh, my company is Soul Expressions and we sell design, we sell custom socks. You bring us a design, we put it on a sock. Awesome. And why did you guys choose this specific business? We chose this business because we noticed that there's many communities all um, over on campus and really just like in the nation and we just kind of wanted to cater to those specific communities, whether it's like a friend group or a business, and really just bring people together through something as fun as a sock. All right, you guys heard it here, folks. Come on down to Soul Expressions here in the MC on the second floor from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and get yourself a pair of socks. So I'm here with? Curtis Parrish. All right, and Curtis. So what business do you guys have, and what do you guys sell? Yeah, so we're called Bretzel Bros. We sell soft pretzel bites. We have a couple different flavors, cinnamon sugar, garlic, and sea salt. Perfect, Perfect. thank you. And why did you guys choose this specific business? Um, well, we did a lot of surveys to see what students would want, um, and we kind of landed on soft pretzel bites. It seemed like everyone would like it, and it has been very popular. So Nice, that's awesome. And I'm glad it's been working, working out well. Come on down for some soft pretzel bites in the Smith Building lobby from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. on weekdays. Get yourself something sweet or salty. I'm here with what's your name? Scott Greer. All right, yeah. All right. and uh, what's your company? Our company is Encircled About. Um, we're a brand new Christian apparel company on campus right in here in the MC. Sounds good. So what do you guys sell? We sell t-shirts, hoodies, and crewnecks um, at a reasonable price. And there are a bunch of designs that we have already, some of which you can see on the board here that we're just trying to get a vote of. Um, and yeah, our message is simple. Like we're just trying to spread Christ-like messages across campus and um, try to spread positivity during this winter semester. That's awesome, I love that. And why did you guys choose this specific business? We chose this business because we had a passion to help out people in the way that would, um, you know, just like I said earlier, just spread a bunch of positivity and um, help bring a sense of uh, unity across students on campus. Sometimes it's easy to be distant um, when it's cold outside here in Rexford. And, um, you know, we all share the same values here. We love our Heavenly Father and um, we want to be like Christ and uh, be an example towards other people around here. So, yeah, come down to the MC from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. and check out and circle the belt and get yourself a t shirt. Thanks. Thanks, Colin. All the student businesses sound awesome. You know, I've been thinking, and maybe Colin and the IBC students could be the name of a band. Yeah, but what kind of band? There's country, rock, pop, metal, or a boy band that's a little late to the scene? You know, I have to root for the metal for that one. Well, that would be interesting. Anyways, let's turn our time to Victoria Scalic and her event recap on Sister Sharon Eubanks and her advice on becoming like Mighty Trees. Thanks you two in the studio. My name is Victoria Scalic and I'm giving you the devotional recap that we just had. We had Sister Sharon Yuben coming, who is the head for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Charity. She talked about many things, but there are three things that I have in mind. She talked about how to grow as a person, how to grow from a seed into a mighty oak tree. She referenced Jacob's story with that. She also talked about Jesus Christ and that His atonement gives us the chance to go from a bad place into a good one because Jesus Christ's atonement pretty much wiped away all the bad, bad things and gave us the opportunity to grow in something better. We as humans should 
work to be a humanitarian every single day of our life. We should help others become the person they need to be. And she named 30 things we should do for the next days or a month. So that's all for me, but let's go hear what other students had to say about the devotional. So what were you guys' thoughts? It was good, yeah, I liked it. I think my favorite part was probably just talking about how just being combined with everyone and the strength that we have with being together. Yeah, it was, it was great as well. I'd say one thing that really stood out to me was her testimony at the end that the greatest thing we can do for uh, helping others is to keep our temple covenants, help others do the same thing, so. I absolutely loved it. I love Sister Eubank. She and I actually served in the same mission, so I've been able to like work with her a little bit. Well, not ever actually personally, but just like see her and speak. And I think I always love when she has the messages prepared because they're always very personal and I feel like they run deeper than most, at least for me personally. That's a good answer. Can you top that? <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> but I'd have to agree. I feel like it was really timely and she just, it was really nice. I, I felt the spirit a lot and it was really applicable for what I'm going through right now. She named 30 things of possible things we can do to change other people's lives through being a humanitarian. So what is the one option you guys chose to change for your daily life? So there's actually a few that I chose. One that I really liked is like when you're doing the 24 hour fast, like I think I love fasting, but it's kind of hard sometimes. And so one thing that I loved is thinking that I'm fasting so that someone else can eat. Like I feel like that would really help me to fast better and more diligently for 24 hours. And then I think another one was just inviting someone to do something with you to like, I mean, the winter's a little crummy sometimes with the weather. So just like helping people get out and like try new things will really help our ecosystem here in Rexburg and even just on campus alone. Those are already very good options. What about you? I think mine is to have more like genuine and intentional conversations. Whenever I'm talking to someone, put my phone away, have full eye contact, actually like actively listen to them and just try to make every moment more intentional. Awesome. Thanks you too. And back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Victoria. How cool is it that people can come together to help others like that? It is inspiring. I love talking about service and humanitarian work. Me too. Speaking of which, did you hear that the school hosted female junior high students for a STEM event? It was a confidence booster for many of them. That's so cool. Another hot topic is the epic defeat of the Pueblo Bulls against the Spud Kings. It's not the World Cup or anything, but I do love watching <laughs> action in hockey. Idaho and their potatoes. And in other exciting news, Rexburg will soon be undergoing some redevelopment and construction. Let's go to Bia Matos with some more church and local news. I'm Bia Matos with this week's church and local news. Starting off with some local news, the Rexburg Tabernacle Orchestra will be holding a concert on Tuesday, March 5th, where they'll be performing a beautiful assortment of classical songs, many of which will be familiar to audience members due to their popularity. The orchestra members are so excited to show everyone what they've been working on. And the performance starts at 7.30 p.m. at the historic Rexburg Tabernacle Building, and it's free for all to come. Switching over to some church news, we now have renderings for some upcoming temples. We have renderings for the Birmingham London Temple, Lone Mountain Nevada Temple, and the McKinney Texas Temple. Very exciting news for the people in those areas. This past week, Elder Suarez taught young adults in the Worldwide Devotional where he addressed the concern of young adults regarding the Savior and His Atonement. Over 2,000 young adults attended the live event. Speaking of the Atonement, the First Presidency has recently released an Easter message reminding us to ponder the Savior's atoning sacrifice. It's still a little e early for Easter, but never too early to remember the Savior and what He's done for us. I'm Bia Matos with this week's Local and Church News. Thanks for watching and back to you guys in the studio. Thanks, Bia. Those are some really interesting stories. <laughs> they sure were. And since we're talking about stories, let's turn our attention to Cicely Walker with the down low on Devo. Our speaker for the week was Anna Taylor, a member of the online staff. Her memorable words hung around the Ice Center and students' hearts all day. To you, Cecily. Thanks guys and welcome everybody to Devotional. I'm your host, Cecily Walker. Today at Devo, we had the amazing opportunity to hear from Sister Taylor. Sister Taylor shared the story of her daughter while she was on her mission. Her daughter went through many trials, but those trials helped her come closer to her Heavenly Father and realize the power of the atonement. Sister Taylor encouraged us to let the atonement en enable us in our daily lives, to let us give us courage, strength, and find peace in our everyday life. So what was your guys' favorite part from devotional? Biggest insight you received? 
Uh, I really liked um, how she talked about the atonement and how she also integrated the talk by Henry B. Eyring. That's what I really loved about it. I felt the spirit. Yeah, and I really liked it when she was talking about something that President Nelson said, where he said, focus on the temple, increase faith in Jesus Christ, and think celestial. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. So what was your guys' favorite insight from devotional today? Um, just that God's always aware and watching out for his children. I loved that she talked about focusing on the temple, how it, it eases our burdens and it helps us get through our trials. Thank you guys so much. I love all of that. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us at Devotional today. We'll see you all next week. Back to you guys in the studio. That was such an insightful wrap up, Cecily. You know, devotionals always leave me with a warm and fuzzy feeling inside. Me too. It's too bad that your feelings don't warm the weather. <laughs> You're telling me, especially with the new snowfall this week. Well, we may not be able to control the weather, but we can tell you about the announcements for this week. And who better to do that than Jeremy Crumbo? Such a funny guy. Over to you, Jeremy. All right, thank you guys so much in the studio. My name is Jeremy Crumbo, and as always, I'm here going over the announcements. So follow me if you want some activities to fill this Saturday with. Let's go. All right, attention all film junkies, you're gonna love this announcement. You can't be sleeping on foreign films as it's some of the best stuff out there. And that's why the visual arts department is going to be hosting the International Cinema Day here in the Spory in room 35 this Saturday. You don't wanna miss it. The event's free. Just come watch some movies and make some new friends. If you want more information, go check out the iBelong app. See you there. All right, guys, I got some good news for you. Here at the Eye Center Auditorium, there's going to be a concert for Amy Grant. If you don't know who Amy Grant is, she's a gospel songwriter, she's a pop star, she's a television personality, and she's going to be here, guys, here at the Eye Center, Friday, 7.30. Get your tickets on the I Belong app now and go tell your friends. That's what I'm going to do right now. Can you take me higher? Oh, hey, sorry. Um, <clears throat> I was just practicing my talent for the BYU talent show. That's going to be happening here at the Crossroads stage in the MC. Now, you're not going to want to miss all the weird, wacky, zany quirks and talents that all the students have here. Now, the event is $3 for students, $5 for general public, and you can get your tickets on the I Belong app. Now, that's all I have for you guys today. Back to you guys in the studio. To a place where blind men see. Thanks, Jeremy. Who doesn't like keeping up with new school events? I don't know, but I sure like to learn about all the fun events offered by the school in the city of Rexburg. Right you are, Lauren. We hope that you've enjoyed another episode of Scroll Broadcast. If you want to read more stories about the school, Rexburg, or other news, please visit the Scroll website at byuiscroll.org. And remember to also check the I Belong app for up-to-date campus activities and events. Well, we've run out of time for today. Remember to tune in next time. And watch a new episode every week on Fridays. Where I'll be posted on social media. And remember to share it with your friends. This has been our show for today. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.